Hello and welcome back to the sixth video in this series on PyViz and Python, a tutorial for how to really work with Python and PyViz and make dynamic network graphs. In this video, we're going to start building off of what we did in the last video, which was creating a network graph that allowed us to see different uh, node shapes in our dynamic network graph so that we could discern between two different pieces of data without having to look at labels to figure out what they were. Now what we're going to start doing is we're going to start moving away from these kind of basic elements of PyViz and start getting into more of the nitty gritty stuff of PyViz. The stuff that really makes it cool and powerful. So the first thing that we need to really understand about uh, PyViz is the algorithms that it has to make these network graphs. In PyViz, you really have three main algorithms. You have the Barnes-Hutt algorithm, which is based around vectorization in a network graph. I'm going to have a link to um, an article on the Barnes-Hutt algorithm. In my opinion, if you're working with a lot of data, it is the best algorithm out there. I'm going to make a separate video that actually talks about the Barnes-Hood algorithm and why uh, humanists should really consider using it in maps that have a lot of data, kind of like these letters we have with Alcuin. The other, uh, another one that you have is what's called the Force Atlas 2-based. Uh, as we're going to see, this is going to play out a little differently, and so will H Repulsion, uh, which I do not believe either one of these is based around uh, vectorization. Uh, what you're going to see when we apply these algorithm, algorithms to the data is a really uh, completely kind of different looking network graph. So without further ado, let's just kind of jump right in and start creating a function so that we can uh, change our map data function really easily uh, and kind of change the uh, the algorithms by just simply passing in arguments. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that, uh, we're going to make a new function right here. We're going to call it, uh, yeah, it's called map algs, A-L-G-S, so map algorithms. And what we're going to do is within this function, we want really um, two key pieces of information. We want the graph object to be passed to it, and we want to have another argument that'll actually define uh, what our algorithm is. Default, I'm going to set it up for just barns. Uh, I'll explain this more in just a second. Let's go ahead and just make the simple algorithm, though. It's going to be a series of if expressions. So if alg uh, equals barns, then we want it to do g barns hut. And this is how you change the algorithm in PyViz. What you do is you set up your object, and our object, if you remember back from video one, is G, which is our network graph, just like you have in NetworkX and Matplotlib. G is our object that is a network graph. We're going to say g.barnshut and pass that function. And what that's going to do is it's going to change the algorithm that that, uh, that object is using. And so by setting up this conditional statement, we're going to be able to actually change it if we tell the function that uh, the algorithm is going to be Barnes. And what we can do is we can pass in some other information. We can pass in alg, if alg equals, we're just going to do a simple name. So we're just going to say forced, and I can never spell uh, forced to atlas correctly. I always have to kind of copy and paste it in. I'm not sure why. We're going to say that if that's the uh, thing passed, yeah, I'm not going to even try. There we go. We're going to do that. We're going to say if alg equals uh, hr. Let's just do that a little easier. We're going to say g dot h repulsion is that. Okay, now let's explain how we're going to actually use this. The reason why I've created a separate function here, it's a little bit of overkill, but I kind of like it. Uh, because it allows for me to kind of just control everything in one function instead of having to alter it multiple times. Uh, what I'm going to do now is pass create another uh, argument for this function, and it's going to be alg. And right now we're going to set that just to barns, which is going to be the barns hut. And what I can do here is I can get rid of this entirely. And what I will have here is map uh, algs. And I'm going to say g. We're going to set alg to alg. Now let's explain what's happening. So in our main function, this map data function, we've got an argument that is ALG. And what we're able to do down here now, when we do this, is we can change that by simply saying barns, which we don't want to do because that's going to be default. But we can pass in things like forced. 
So now, if I were to run this, what's going to happen is ALG is being passed here, which is going to override the uh, the default ALG argument that I have here, which is Barnes. What it's going to do is it's going to pass this information into this function. And when it gets down to here, this line of code, line 36, it is going to run the map algs function. And what that's going to do is it's going to pass in G, which is our graph, and it's going to pass in the argument that we've defined here, ALG. And when it does that, it's going to go through and look for something to match. So if ALG is forced, it's going to create a graph based around forced atlas two based. Let's go ahead and just kind of explain experiment with what this is going to look like with the default barns, so you can kind of see how this is going to change. Let's go ahead and run this. Should run hopefully no problem. <laughs> Yay, it worked. Once again, loading a little bit, a lot of data here. This is the barns hut uh, vectorization, and we see it happening just like we had it before in the last video. We set it up where these nodes were just texts. If you remember, I'm going to go through and change that in just a second because I find it to be very annoying. Um, but you can see that we have the Barnes head algorithm, and I'm going to explain what's happening uh, through, with this vectorization in a later video. But let's go ahead and close this. Uh, let's go ahead and change. Let's just change the shape. It is going to drive me crazy. So we're going to change it back to box. There we go. Let's change our algorithm now because we've created this function. All we have to do is change a single argument in line 41, which is when we are calling our main function, the map data one. And let's go ahead and run this now. Now what it's doing is it's going through and passing that same information now with the forced algorithm. And if you notice now, this is a very different looking map. And the reason why it's a very different looking map is because we're passing in a very different algorithm. No longer are we using the Barnes Hut algorithm to create the graph. Instead, we're using the forced based to Atlas algorithm. And again, I'm going to go into more depth on these different algorithms in a later video. This video is just about how to actually create a graph using these um, these algorithms and how to change that. And the way in which we change it is simply by saying G dot and then the name of the algorithm. And in PyViz, you really have these three options. Let's go ahead and just for fun, do this. I'm going to run it. And I can't remember what this is going to do, what it's going to look like. Uh, I haven't experimented with H repulsion in a while. Uh, but again, you can see a very different looking network graph from either the Barnes Hut algorithm or the um, forced algorithm. What we're seeing here is how the data remains the exact, the exact same. And yet the algorithm, which is receiving the data, interpreting it and creating the graph and plotting out the information, takes that data and has a wildly different visualization. And no one visualization method is the right one. Uh, data scientists, humanists who use these algorithms, we, we spend a lot of time uh, thinking about the algorithms, considering how they affect the graph, and uh, choosing the one that reflects best our data. And for me, I find that the Barnes-Hutt algorithm is really useful for when I work with huge quantities of data. At other times when I'm working with smaller data, I find that the forced algorithm is a little bit better. Um, but this is one of the great things about PyViz is it's very easy to simply experiment and find one that works best for you. One of the drawbacks, for those of you who are coming to PyViz from a matplotlib background or a network X background, one of the drawbacks to PyViz is the limitation in the number of algorithms that you can uh, employ. I'm hoping that in future updates, they kind of expand and give us more. Right now, we're really kind of left with, I believe, just these three. If I'm wrong, somebody let me know in the comments, and I'll be sure to make a corrected video and talk about another one. But as far as I know, you really have these three to work with. That said, these three are very useful and very powerful. What we're going to start doing in the next video, though, in the next video, we're going to start figuring out how to allow for a user to actually adjust the graph on the fly. And we're going to start passing in arguments to these algorithms. We're going to start passing in arguments like spring length so we can dictate how big and how far uh, our nodes will be from one another. We're also going to start controlling the gravity. And we're going to do a lot of this in real time 
And we're going to do this using one of the best features of PyViz, which is a feature called Set Options, which is going to allow us to actually engage with the graph in real time and not adjust the code uh, beforehand and create a new graph to see if it looks right. That's all for this video, though. Stick around, and it's going to get a lot better in video 7.